We still have our guests with us, and um, we've discussed your official duties. But we also know they are the daughter of one of the very prominent, late, though she's late today, they are the daughter of um, Chief Mrs. Kemi Nelson, and um, we lost her. Yes. Uh, this, was it last the year or this year? This year. This year. This year. Yeah, it's not so long ago. July. July. Not so long yeah. ago. And, it, and the, of course, Lagos was shut down because she was such a prominent uh, woman leader in the state, and many people have known her and connected to Chief Mrs. Ken, Kemi Nelson. How has it been? I mean, especially because you are her oldest child, I believe. No, I actually have an older brother. You have an older brother, because many people thought you were the oldest child. No. But how do you feel as, how do, do you feel like you need to fit into her shoes? Because she had this huge personality ah. that everybody just Signature. knew her. There's no event in this Lagos. If you don't see Chibi Sinder there, it's not an event. Well, um, I, I wouldn't lie, it's been really tough um, not having her around, especially now, yeah. you know, because she was, she was, big on politics and um, touching people's lives, social impact and all that. And now with all the campaigns and politics going on, mm. she would have been thriving at this time. So it's especially difficult at this time. Um, she, you're right, she left really, really huge shoes to fill. But um, I, myself and my siblings, I mean, we're trying not to be under pressure to fit into those shoes because right. there's, there can only be one Kemi Nelson. Yeah. And you know, you're trying hard to fit into those shoes mm. You know, it's literally yeah. like you're struggling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, our hope and our, our hope and our belief is that we would um, take from the mistakes that she made, learn from those mm. mistakes, leverage on the relationships that she built, and because a lot of um, her friends, you know, reached out to us, a lot of her colleagues, a lot of her um, mentors, mm. mentees reached out to us, and then they've been very supportive. Um, my brothers and I are doing very well in our various um, <laughs> chosen glad. careers. We're not very outgoing people as yeah. much as she was. I think I'm the only one that really... Um, <laughs> so people didn't take after her in that regard? <laughs> not in that regard, no. <laughs> so what would be some of the legacies you think she's left behind that you would like to... I know you don't want to fit into her <laughs> shoes, but what were some of the things you learned from her you would like to continue? Oh, my mom was very giving. She used... I mean, she could literally give the clothes off her back. She never hoarded anything. She never, I mean, she was always giving things out. So I think we've come to learn that way, to always be giving. She loved people. She loved having people around her. You know, sometimes we'll be in the house, there'll be like at least 30 people in the house. <laughs> and we just, you know, yeah, yeah, pass yeah. the corner and just go and sit one place. So that is also something that we've learned, that you must have people close to you. You must have people around you that you can lean on, you know, at any point in time. She loved women. She loved the women agenda you know mm. she loved impacting people she had so many people that she was looking after taking care of so myself and my brothers have thought you know she had a foundation called kemi nelson foundation and we've thought that you know within the next one year we need to take over that foundation and see you know what can we do mm. in in line with the kind of things she was pas passionate about right, right. and see if we can maybe provide scholarships for girls yeah, right. you know do things for people that she would have ordinarily done so those are the kind of things that we've... we've so, uh, as, um, I, I wanted to focus on you, but, you know, you right, cannot talk... You, to... Once you put the spotlight on Kevin Nelson, you cannot hear <laughs> yeah. it. It's okay, I'm used to, I'm used to anything that. Anything around. So, um, she was a people's person. Yeah. She managed people. Yeah. That skill, how much of it did you inherit, learn from her, you know? How is it helping in your present position? Um, um, well, I've, so for, for work, I've worked in private sector, I've, I'm, I'm now in public sector, and I would say it took me some time to, you know, move into and understand the way public sector works. Because in private sector, give your targets, you meet your targets, That's done. It. done, no story, <laughs> we don't have to Around be friends, it. just do your work and I move. But here it's different because you ha now everybody's my stakeholder. You know, I have my staff, I have my colleagues, I have my bosses, I have the public. You have to be able to manage people. My mom used to, every morning, my mom would call me at 6 a.m. exactly and, and pray. She, she did the same for myself and my brothers, my husband, my brother's wife. And she used to pray for each one of us. And the one prayer she used to pray for me is, just be patient. Just be patient. Just be patient. And I've learned that you need to be patient when you're, when you're dealing with people. You, yes, I am, I'm the kind of person I just want to provide solutions and move. But then you cannot provide solutions for people that you don't understand. Yes, mm, in isolation. You cannot because you're just fixing the problem, but you're not looking at the person behind the problem. So you also need to be thinking about what do these people really want? What, what are they yearning for? What are the needs of the people? How can I solve those problems? So even in my job, in creating parks, for example, 
we need to be looking at what kind of things do the people want. So you just go somewhere, plant grass, and you think you've done it. But then you go back in six months and you see the young boys playing football there. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that it's not grass they want. They want <laughs> the something, field. a the place field. where they can commune. Mm. So you provide that for them and then automatically they want to take responsibility to take care of that place and make mm -hmm. sure it, it works. Mm. So that has also helped yeah. me in um, dealing with my colleagues. Um, at first we used to fight all the time because <laughs> I was just like, I don't want to hear people just give me the results. But then you realize that you need to you know, know about their homes. You need to ask for, about their children. Right. How are you doing? If they tell you something, oh, my child was ill, you ask about them. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes you a better person. It makes Connect, you... Right. Exactly, you have that connection. So even when you tell the person jump, they ask mm -hmm. you how high. All right. Mm -hmm. Because, because really they believe that you actually do have love the them. Interest. Have the interest at heart. You know, I wanted to ask you, oh, how's your husband? How about the kids? How do you marry, manage marriage? But I feel that this is a more important question. Many people tend to see political children of politicians <laughs> and any achievement they have as being affiliated to the political people, the, the person they your got mom, it from, your mom, yeah. or you identify, they don't see your hard work, they don't see the fact that you might have earned it or yeah. it was a merit thing. Yeah. How has that been when you came into this position? And how did you feel you won, walked your way out of it? Okay, so anyone that knows me, even from when I was working in um, the bank, knows that I was one of those people that I didn't like to talk about my mom because I never wanted that to overshadow my work. So, so I remember one time I was in the bank, I, was, I used to be in customer service, and someone came, what's your name? Then I was, I was not married. What's the name? Tony Nelson. Oh, are you related to Kevin? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he denied straight. Do you understand? Um, I remember in primary school one time, my mom had to call my brothers and I to ask, are you ashamed of me? Are you ashamed oh. of the work that, we, you know, that I do? And we're like, no, it's just that it's, it gets really overwhelming. My mom contested for Senate, House of Rep, then we were much younger, but I remember clearly in primary school my mom would put her hand bills in our bag mm. and say take it to school go and give your friends to mm. give their, their parents. parents and we get halfway in school and we fling it out of the window mm. like no i'm not doing that <laughs> but you know with time we came to understand you know mm. her passion her you know because politics is actually a job mm -hmm. people didn't see it as a job especially for women in the past it was just carry a bunch of women together give them gilly and then they go and start singing. Mm. But when we saw the kind of conversations she was having, the kind of people that she was meeting, the kind of opportunities she had, we grew to understand and appreciate you know, mm. that in her. Even when I got to the public sector, you're right, it did becloud some people. You know, so they come and say, oh, that can mean also that they already, they already have an impression mm. about you, that she must be this, she must be that, she must, you know. But I used to have to work extra hard mm. to make sure that, look, forget it. This is me, this is my work. I love my work to speak for me, you know. And luckily, I work in the Ministry of Environment where, where if you don't do it, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. If you do it, it's obvious, you mm -hmm. know. So I didn't have to struggle too much to show my work. Mm -hmm. But again, there was, there's always sometimes that bias where mm -hmm. people already, already just imagine. You're going to look into politics anytime soon? Coming from getting into politics? Well, <laughs> never say never. <laughs> but for now, I'm, I'm good. Anyway, yeah. I'm good where We I have am. to wrap up, but I think there was one question about the parks that popped up in my mind. Most of our parks don't have parking spaces. Mm. Really looking to yeah, do yes. that. Well, the ones that are um, recreational parks, the large ones, JJC, Nubisi Kanu Park, they have parking spaces. Um, Oregon Park has a huge parking space. Um, the one at Miracola is the one that I know has issues, but I've had a conversation with the governor recently, and then we decided on what to do to solve that problem. But temp as a temporary solution, when people have large events, we, we, and we have a good relationship with the law school, Nigerian Law School and King's College. And people use those spaces as car parks. But eventually, in the next few months, going into next year, we've come up with a new design where we can accommodate parking and then you should be able to solve it. There's that. only one question for you on line. Um, Andrew says, how do you deal with the scourge of area boys at Lagos Parks? Ah. Okay, Very so good. the area boys, like, like I say, everybody's a stakeholder. Good boys of Lagos. Mm. So even those good boys of Lagos are our stakeholders. And yeah. so what we try to do is also engage them. Sometimes we use them to act as security to the space. You know how they say, once you are part of something, you don't want to see yeah, it destroyed. Right, right, right. So we, we work with LASMA, we work with the Neighborhood Watch and the Good Boys mm -hmm. to also provide security, traffic management and all of that. I noticed that spaces. one of the meetings I had recently from, from, from some, some government event, one of the leaders of the yeah, Good Boys yeah. was part of our meeting yeah, because yeah, he, he was yeah. part of the ground up. Yeah, so he was able to yeah, talk to his people, he was a part exactly. of the entire event. That's how to engage. That's how to engage. Yeah. Yeah.